Research shows that more than four in five UK adults believe that people with obesity are viewed in a negative light because of their weight. And 62% of British people think that people are likely to discriminate against somebody who is overweight. This is actually higher than other forms of discrimination, including ethnic background, which stands at 60%, and sexual orientation, which stands at 56%, and gender, which is 40%. Obese members of the public who experience this kind of stigma, discrimination, and stereotyping affects all aspects of their lives. Research shows that nearly half of UK adults living with obesity have felt judged purely because of their weight, primarily in social situations and actually even worse, more worryingly, some have felt their weight being judged in areas that they would go normally to seek help for their problems such as healthcare, gyms, all of those kinds of places. And those figures actually shocked me. I actually have a quote here from Vanessa Hebditch, I believe that's how you pronounce her name. I do apologise if I'm wrong here. And she's actually a member of the British Liver Trust. And she explains that being overweight is a major cause of liver disease and one third of UK adults are now overweight or obese. However, we need to recognise that this is a problem of our environment more than individual willpower and stop stigmatising people. This only hinders their attempts to seek help. Government and policy makers should also take urgent steps to comprehensively tackle this epidemic by addressing labelling and marketing and improving education and awareness. And of course, people can feel judged by their weight online. And I actually am reading something from the British Liver Trust here. Um, again, I would definitely recommend this article to you guys. It's full of very, very interesting facts and statistics. Um, and it actually says here, weight stigma is also felt online. Around one in four people with obesity, 23%, have felt judged online because of their weight. A separate analysis by the World Obesity Federation has found nearly 10,000 tweets with stigmatising language on social media since January 2018, which include body shaming and abuse. And I think what a lot of people tend to reply when someone talks about how they've been discriminated against in one way or another, the first reply that you will more than likely receive is, oh, well, you just need thicker skin. This is the internet or this is the world we live in today. Like, you need to get a grip. And I think that's really appalling. Like, I've had that said to me before. And yeah, it's never nice. And actually, other research shows that a quarter, 25% of UK adults that were surveyed um, actually admitted that out of two equally qualified candidates, one obese and one non-obese, they would put through the healthier weight person over the candidate that is obese. So that just shows the level of discrimination that obese people have to put up with and should they have to put up with it no it's not right at all but a quarter 25 percent of people would give a job to the healthy weight candidate over the equally qualified obese candidate just because these people are obese it doesn't mean that they can't do their jobs and I think social media does play a massive part in discrimination if of any form because people are now more confident than ever in discriminating against somebody because they can quite easily, you know, hide behind their keyboard and say whatever they like and they think that there are no consequences for it. And to be honest, I don't think that there is substantial consequences for this kind of behavior at all especially online for some people for some reason people just have this kind of 
confidence about them that they can do what they want and make people feel like absolute rubbish and put people down and oh well it doesn't matter because uh, this is just the world that we live in now and this is the internet you need thicker skin that's all anyone seems to say and it is a simple answer to a much bigger more complicated issue where is the respect gone like that is what I think needs to be asked here like where has the respect for other people's feelings gone and I think one of the perfect celebrities to talk about in terms of obesity discrimination is actually Gemma Collins. And for those of you who don't know who Gemma Collins is, she was originally on The Only Way Is Essex. And honestly, she's always been a chunkier lady, kind of like me. I'm a chunky lady. But um, yeah, Gemma Collins is a chunky lady and she always has been and she's always been quite open about her uh, struggles with weight as well. Uh, which I totally, like, take my hat off to her, to be quite honest, because it's very hard to open up about very personal issues. Um, so I think we need more people like her to just be so blunt and honest with things like this. But yeah, I have an article here by uh, the Daily Mail, and this is actually something that happened fairly recently at the time of recording this video. Um, this was wrote about in November 2018. And basically what happened was Gemma Collins was bullied whilst she was enjoying a coffee with some friends in Brentwood. And they called her some really disgusting things, like things that I don't even really want to repeat here on this channel. Um, but basically the discrimination was specifically targeting her weight. And the article actually says that the incident happened late September and was actually filmed by the offenders themselves. They were a pair of men who were giggling as they drove up to Gemma, who was sat outside of the eatery at the time. One was called Gaz, and they asked if they should go and tell Gemma what they think of her, to which the other, which is named Steve, said they should, branding her some really horrible names like they called her some very disgusting things and I don't agree with that whatsoever that's not what I'm about and to film it as well just shows how absolutely disgusting and cocky these people are and why is there not more serious consequences for this kind of thing that's what really really irritates me moving on actually to figures more towards the um American side rather than just us here in the UK. Um, I visited a website called obesityaction.org, very interesting article, and it says, in a recent study we examined the prevalence of multiple forms of discrimination in a nationally representative sample of 2,290 American adults and found that weight discrimination is common among Americans with rates relatively close to the prevalence of race and age discrimination. Among women, weight discrimination was even more common than racial discrimination. Among all adults in the study, weight discrimination was more prevalent than discrimination due to ethnicity, sexual orientation and physical disability. This article actually goes on to state that the rates for men were lower with 3% overweight, 6% of obese and 28% of men with severe obesity reporting weight discrimination. This finding also tells us that women began experiencing weight discrimination at lower levels of body weight than men, which was something that I kind of had a feeling that that was the way that it was anyways. But still, you know, anyone can be discriminated against because of their weight and it shouldn't be happening full stop. And the thing is, no matter where you are in the world, if you have been discriminated against because of your weight, it's going to affect your mental health. It's going to affect your life chances, your body image, your confidence level. It affects all sorts of things. And I think what definitely needs to happen here is we need to change the public's thoughts, opinions and, and perceptions and improve the public's knowledge of these kinds of things. And obesity rates are on the rise and 
they're going to continue to rise. And the British Liver Trust are actually appealing to the General Medical Council and education providers to improve patient management training in medical schools as people with obesity are often dismissed by their healthcare professional because of their weight without being properly diagnosed. So again, you know, I could talk for ages about this because there are a lot of um, different plot holes, I think, to obesity discrimination but I thought that it was very necessary to make this video especially when I've been speaking on the fast food industry I thought that this would be quite fitting um talking about obesity discrimination as it is so frequent and it happens so so much um in our society so I think it was very important to make this video so I just realised, now that I'm going to end this podcast, that I didn't even, like, greet you guys or welcome you guys. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I guess I should do that now. If you're new here, I hope that you liked this podcast. If you did like this podcast, leave it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, click on that subscribe button. The links to both season one and season two of my podcast will be linked in the description box down below, along with all of the sources I used in order to create this video for you guys today. This was very, very interesting topic, but this will be the final episode of season two of the podcast. And I can't believe it. Time seems to have flown by but I've really enjoyed learning more about obesity and the fast food world it's all very 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 interesting to me so I hope you enjoyed um sorry that I didn't give you guys a proper welcome a proper greeting I kind of feel a little bit bad now but hopefully you enjoyed this this video and maybe you learned something that you didn't know before you know, maybe you learned something new like I did and that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these podcasts because not only am I hoping that I'm I'm teaching you guys something but I'm learning so much myself as well I think that's very very interesting so stay tuned for season three of the podcast and um, at the moment I don't have many things planned for season three um, it's very early days for season three. I will be taking a little bit of a break with podcasts, probably for about a month or so, kind of get stuff together in preparation for season three of the podcast. And I will give you guys more information about when the third season of the podcast will be starting up. Um, so thank you guys so much. If you've watched all of the episodes from season one and season two, oh my gosh, you're actually like I could kiss you right now. Um, thank you so much for the support and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thanks a lot guys.